Pasir Ris Ponggo GRC. Salam sejahtera. Tajia Wan Sang Hao. Good evening. It has been a very busy week for me, but I've been cherishing every moment of it. I've spoken to many residents about different issues, and many of them have centered on bread and butter things. Our team has updated our residents on the programs that are ongoing and those that will be fulfilled in the short future. I've mentioned many of this in my first rally speech, and our team is looking forward to building a better town for ourselves and for our children with you. Tonight, I would like to recount three interesting conversations I have had with you on the broader issues facing our Singapore. First, I met a Mr. Harry Gunn in one of my block visits. When I went up to him, he shook my hand readily, warmly, and told me straight off, I will vote for you. I smiled at him, I thanked him, but I also came up with a question. I asked him, why? Why would you vote for me? He looked a bit surprised. Maybe he expected me just to shake his hand, thank him, and move on to the next neighbour. But he paused for a moment and he told me, I don't take Singapore's success for granted. He pointed to his neighbours, an Indian family, a Malay family, a couple of Chinese families, all from different racial background, religious background, language backgrounds. He said to me, all of us live in harmony and we take care of each other. This, where? Can you find this in the rest of the world? Harry's, Harry is right. We should never take any of these things for granted. We must remember that Singapore is a small island. We must remember our history. We must remember the racial riots, the religious riots that almost tore us apart in the earliest years, the tumultuous years of our nationhood. Yes, we celebrated SG50 on the 9th of August, but the journey wasn't a smooth sailing one as many of the younger generation would think. Our generation must tell our history to them to let them know that Singapore's exceptional story is based on hard work, exceptional leadership, and committed Singaporeans. <laughs> Internally in Singapore, we need to be a strong, united people because with this unity, we will draw the strength to meet the many challenges ahead that will face Singapore. We have many difficult decisions that will face us in the coming years. We live in an increasingly difficult world. My colleagues have mentioned some of them economically and even in security externally. Situation in Malaysia, in Indonesia, even in Thailand. Terrorism is at our doorstep. State-to-state -state relations between the great powers are increasingly high tensioned. We need to be a united people. We need, to be, we need to be secure so that we can pursue our Singapore's interests and the interests of Singaporeans. Externally, we will need a strong SAF. Internally, we will need a strong police force to make sure our way of life can be protected, our way of life can be pursued for the next 50 years so that our children can chase their rainbows. I will never 
want Singapore to be bullied. On the second story, last evening, as I was walking about in the late evening, walking back to my office, a middle-aged father in a very interesting device, a motorized skate scooter with a daughter riding in front of him, reading a book, was riding past me. He literally jumped off the skate scooter, stopped me in my tracks, grabbed my arm and said to me, Mr. Ng, you must do the right thing. Of course, you know, in that sojourn, I was slightly taken aback. And I asked him, yes, what right thing would you like me to do? This gentleman is a taxi driver. He told me he does not have a high income. He does not have high academic qualifications. But he would like to tell me that Mr. Ng, the PAP cannot do what others are promising. Giving away this, giving away that, and even giving free money away. He knows that this is not sustainable. He pointed to his eight-year-old daughter, if I remember the name correctly, Shannon, and said that I do not want my daughter to grow up in a first world country and in one generation end up in old age in a third world country. He looked at me with all seriousness and pleaded with me, Mr. Ng, do the right thing, no matter how tough. I looked at him in the eye and I told him, yes, sir, I will do the right thing, no matter how tough. Our election is not about making empty promises that we cannot keep. Instead, we must calmly, collectively, come up with the best plans to position our Singapore in all aspects so that we can serve our national interests and we can serve our Singaporeans' interests to the best of our abilities. With a strong economy, Singaporeans can have good jobs. With good jobs and income, Singapore as a society will have the resources so that we can take care of each other. There is no free lunch, and even my friend, my resident, the taxi driver, knows this. I also met Injit Sulaiman, an older gentleman and a proud PAP member since 1965. He told me straight up as well, he will vote for the PAP. He is convinced that the PAP remains the only viable party that will be able to govern Singapore effectively. I agree fully with him. Do you not? Yes. Simply take a look at the world around us. While some of us may argue that having more opposition will serve us better. But I ask humbly, where is the evidence around the whole wide world that this will actually lead to a better outcome for Singapore and Singaporeans? Look at the world around us. My friends from around the world, be it the US, Australia, Europe, Taiwan, they lament to me that their politics are meribund. They cannot get things going. They cannot get things done. So, this is not just a debate where we argue and can go away agreeing to disagree. This election is about your life, about my life and our children's life. Where can we find another Singapore in the world's map that has not only survived with the resources that we have, which is none, but have succeeded beyond imagination in the last 50 years? 
countries from all over the world, including the Chinese, come to Singapore to study our governance, surely the PAP, together with you, have done something right in the last 50 years. So, my dear friends, let me ask a very simple question of ourselves. What is this election about? First, I think it is about understanding and meeting Singaporean needs, the bread and butter issues. I understand that. My PAP colleagues understand that. Has the government done better since the last election? Yes. A fair man and a fair woman would say yes. Yes, of course there are things to be done better. Our transportation system still requires improvements. But our economy is still performing amidst very difficult and a challenging environment. Whether it is the global competition, whether it is the manpower shortages, we are still having a reasonable economy. Singaporeans continue to have good jobs. Unemployment rates remain low. We make sure, even today, especially today, that all Singaporeans have access to good quality education. We ensure that all have access to quality and affordable health care. And we make sure housing is affordable. We are using our resources to take care of our elders. We are using our resources to take care of the needy. Second, this election is about finding the best party to forge the way ahead for Singapore, for Singaporeans. The world is getting tougher. Economic competition, as I said, is ever increasing. Security concerns are rising. When we look at our Singapore internally, we will understand that there is an ageing population. This, in time, will have implications to all our lives in almost all aspects of our Singaporean life. We all want Singapore to succeed. But the key question is how? Ultimately, which is the party that will be able to governize Singaporeans and best place to lead Singaporeans ahead to meet these challenges? How will you vote? Will you vote for people who make empty promises, give out this and that, and risk our future as a country and as a people? Will you vote for people who want to slash our defence budget and throw away our security? Or will you vote for people who are opposing for opposition's sake but have no viable concrete proposals to chart the way forward for Singapore, for us? Then I say, vote the PAP! I say it with full confidence and I believe it. Singapore, if you give us the strongest mandate, we'll make sure Singapore and Singaporeans succeed. We have stood together with you the last 50 years. We will stand together. We will stand up for you, with you, for Singapore in the next 50. Vote the PAP. Majula PAP. Majula Singapura!